Good morning, and we're live. Augment your week. January 18th, another week. This is the third Monday in January of 2021. What an exciting time. I'm, I am excited to share with you some thoughts this morning. I've been pondering over the weekend. We'll give everybody just a chance, a moment or two to catch up with us. Make sure you have some hydration. I've got my wonderful healthy shake. Oh, that's good. Mm. Give everybody just a couple of minutes to join us. We're going to jump into a, an interesting topic this morning. And it's all about gratitude. But I've been looking at it a, a little differently this weekend. And I want to invite you to do likewise. In one specific area, when we look at our lives, <clears throat> and I have been very introspective lately. You know, I didn't. I didn't take a prescription drug till I was 67. <laughs> it's been a very interesting six months. Hopefully we're on the men now and we'll get our energy back. Did a workout this morning. Oh, that felt so good. Having a chance to reflect on our, our lives. And it's, it's great when we can do it much earlier. And particularly in this area, people in our lives that have impacted us for good. Who are those people? There are three people in my life that stand out of above almost everyone. And I'm going to share their stories this morning in an effort to have you become introspective and reflective this week on those who have impacted your life, who've helped you get to where you are. We have a tendency to reflect on what isn't happening, what isn't good, what we don't have. But we're here and we're alive and we have a new day before us. When Og says, today I am born anew and my birthplace is a vineyard where there's fruit for all. We've got a brand new day ahead of us, followed by another. What are we going to do going forward and not carrying yesterday's baggage with us, but bringing with us gratitude for those who have shaped our lives. The very first person I thought of, and I, I brought these with me, this coin collecting book for Lincoln Sense between 1909 and 1940 is 61 years old, 61 years old. The story behind this, which has been now updated into a larger version, and then all the way up into 1990, where I did some collecting with Paul. I keep them all. But this one back in 19, oh my goodness, 1959, 1959, that's a long time ago just got back from Chicago. Those of you who are familiar with the Chicago dream, we've just spent years in Chicago, dad going to college, working during the day, excuse me, working during the night, going to school all day. Mom was working in a high rise. She was raised on my grandma's farm <laughs> uh, in Amalga, Utah. It's not the end of the world, but if you get up on top of the house, I promise you can see it from there. She did not have plumbing in her house until she, until after she was married. I mean, that's how she grew up. My grandmother had me spend a summer with her after being in the care and keeping of a pedophile for two years. Wow. That summer changed my life. My grandmother for 50 plus years had been sticking her pennies in a jar. And then it went to a, a log cabin syrup tin. They used to look like a log cabin and the lid was like the chimney, yeah? And it was pretty big and it weighed a lot. I was like five and a half years old. I was a little guy and I'm holding this thing. I'm looking at grandma, what is that? Grandma says, I'll tell you what. We went into town and bought this. 
I don't know what it cost, maybe five cents back then. And she sat me down on the living room floor and we emptied all of those pennies, huge mound. And for the next several days, I went through them one at a time and put them into the book. There were even some Indian head pennies in there, which was really fun. I still have those separate from this. And I filled up this book all the way through to this book in part, which was into the 40s and 50s, including 1943 and the steel pennies. They didn't have enough copper because of the war. The copper was all going into the bullets. And they, they made the pennies out of steel in 1943. I have all three of them. All of these were in my grandmother's log cabin tent. I felt like a million dollars. It was an incredible experience. It launched a series of dreams in my life that were so healing. I am so grateful to my grandmother. Every time I saw her, it was like she had nothing else to do but love me. And I, I really needed that from a grandma. Thank you, Grandma Hanson. Who's your Grandma Hanson? Who in your life? Just go to the chat and, and write down that first person in your life. Go from your childhood and the first person who had an impact on you. Just write them down. Let us share these this morning. It was Grandma so-and-so. Maybe it was my mother, my dad. It could have been an uncle. It could have been a friend. Who was the first person who impacted your life? Because I started collecting these coins then my other grandma found out I was collecting and gave me a 19, excuse me, 1883 Liberty nickel she'd been keeping for most of her lifetime. That's the first year of a Liberty nickel. There were only 23 million of those minted back then. I have it right here in my Liberty head nickel collection. There it is right there. I started collecting those. And she, in elementary school, there were still a few around. How exciting was that? And then I remember one night having a dream shortly after this experience. My father, when I would do chores, would give me a quarter. So I started collecting quarters. And when you find a quarter that's a silver quarter, a dime that's a silver dime, that's really exciting. I would collect those quarters. And one night I had a dream. I came out of my bedroom, down the back steps and into the backyard. I can still remember it like yesterday, three steps. I knew that somewhere in this backyard was buried a treasure. I had a shovel in my hand and I was led to this one spot. I could feel the treasure and I started to dig. And I dug and I dug and I dug and all of a sudden my shovel tapped what sounded like a metal lid and I brushed away the dirt and I lifted up the lid and there was a treasure trove of quarters. <laughs> See, when you have a quarter, you're the richest person on the planet back then, right? Back then. And I dug my hands into the quarters and there were, it was bottomless. They just ran through my fingers. I played with them and I woke up. I reflected that on that dream for years. I never forgot it. Like I said, I can remember it like it's yesterday. And then one day it hit me and my grandmother opened this up for me. That every single one of us have buried in our own backyard, metaphorical backyard, a treasure. And one of the treasures I have is my grandmother. She saved my life. Who do you have? Papa, my grandfather on my mother's dad. Yeah, Bobby, thank you for sharing. My mom, my grandma. Isn't it wonderful just for a moment? Because sometimes we're so busy with so much, we don't stop and go back and say, Wow, if it wouldn't have been for that, 
what would have happened? We soon moved down to Georgia. And I mean like deep Southern Georgia. <laughs> we went to school at White Oak. White Oak had desks that were still bolted to the floor. And the school was so old, the bathroom was an adjacent building because they didn't have plumbing when they first built it. And my fifth grade teacher was the number two person. From grandma to her, Virginia Colson. Virginia Colson was probably 65 years old at the time. She did, did not ever get married. She just loved her kids. Those were her students. She was just known for it. Well, one day she got called to the office to, to address some issue. And she, before she left, she said, be good, children. Well, somebody flipped a rubber band at someone and another flipped a rubber band. Well, I'm going to get involved in this. And just as I'm getting ready to flip my rubber band, she walks in. Well, we were all in trouble. She <laughs> got a smile. She says, you boys are flipping rubbers. That's what she said. It was so funny. <laughs> I didn't understand it then, but I reflect on it now. Anyway, I get, a, I get distracted. Bottom line, she said, boys, this is what you're going to do. And she opened up Rudyard Clipping to his famous poem, If. And she said, you're going to memorize this and share it with the class. And until you do, you will not have another recess. Wow. That's pretty strict punishment. <laughs> for someone in the fifth grade to get out of the classroom for a few minutes into fresh air, right? Well, I went home that night and I was so determined. I memorized that poem. Ah, you'll be a man. Yes. Memorized that. Went back the next day and she wanted to report, how are you all doing? I said, I'm ready. Really? And I said, yes, I'm ready. So she called me to the front of the classroom and I quoted the poem from memory. She grabbed me by the back of the neck and drug me down the hall from classroom to classroom to classroom. You've got to hear this. I do this like that, interrupt the class. You've got to hear this and have me quote the poem if I felt like a million dollars. I had never accomplished anything like that. To be honored by her like that, we became dear, close friends. I will forever be grateful for what she did before and after. But for that day, Virginia Colson was my hero. She changed my life. I then knew I could accomplish anything anything, if I put my mind to it. Who in your educational path was that person? Oh, we all had one of those teachers who wanted to send us to the, you know, we call it the short bus, right? And some never got past that until they got older. I'm so grateful for her because it made everything else possible. Who in your life educationally, as you're going through school, change your life. A school teacher, a professor maybe in college, just write their name down to say it was my eighth grade teacher, my ninth grade teacher, my, my calculus teacher, whatever it might be. Just write it down. And let's spend a few moments today reflecting on how that person inspired you academically. Now, a lot of people, myself included, feel less than when it comes to this area of life. There's always someone smarter with more credentials who went further, right? Maybe your parents insisted you go to the best schools and, and shepherded you through to the highest levels of education. Many did not have that benefit, but all of us have had one person in our life who supported us. Just write them down. Ooh, 
Mrs. Vincent, my third grade teacher, isn't it my music teacher? Yes. Who is that person educationally? Third, this is a toss up. My dad was a hardworking guy. Oh, I'm emotional this morning. And I love him for that. My great experience with him, I wrote about it today. I begin a new life when I interviewed him about work and passion driven work, purpose driven work. But in my childhood, <laughs> I was always working, but we never had a connection around it. It was always, you know, punishment. <laughs> That's how it was, maybe for you too. But it was Terry Byers. When we moved to Colorado, I had the privilege of working for Wood Rock Landscape. It later became Timberline. If anybody lives in Arvada, Colorado, you know Timberline Nursery. It's still got to be there. I think his children have inherited it and taken it over. I still remember the moment with Terry because we would start like at six o'clock in the morning. We'd go, go to a job, he'd line it out, excuse me, he'd leave. I would work all morning, he'd come back at noon. He worked at DuPont. This, this, this wood rock was a fledgling landscape company he was trying to launch. And I was the only employee, right? And then he'd, tweak things at lunch, then he'd go back to work, come back at 5.30, and we'd work till 10 o'clock at night, often with pickup truck lights on his Ford pickup truck, four-wheel drive pickup truck. <laughs> I remember the first day on the job. I walked up and knocked on the door and said, I'm here. And he said, great. See the truck? I want you to back the truck up, hook up the trailer, and put the tractor on the trailer. I'd never driven a truck, let alone a tractor. I said, okay, give me just a quick one, two, three on the tractor, okay? You push in this, you move this, the throttle's here. Okay, got it. Well, I put the truck into reverse. That was over and down. Let out the clutch and it's exciting because a pickup truck isn't quite as lurchy in reverse. Got it backed up. It took a few times to get it lined up with the with the tongue of the trailer, but I did, got it hooked up, drove it to the front, went and got on the tractor. I could do this, I could do this. And I got it started up and I'm driving the tractor toward the trailer, I slow down. Okay, I get the front wheels on and I start to push up. I left the truck in neutral, which means the truck and the trailer started rolling forward with the pressure of the wheels once they hit the trailer. Got off the ramps onto the trailer. I'm rolling. Well, my 15 and a half year old mind said, speed up the tractor. <laughs> Got to get faster than the truck, right? So as soon as I lurched forward, the back wheels touched the ramps. They dug in the ground. The truck stopped. The tractor did not. It went up over the trailer and into the back of Terry's brand new pickup truck. Crushed the tailgate crush the trailer brake. Terry comes running out because it's revving. Because remember, I sped it up. <laughs> it's still revving. I'm, ah! He just turned it off. Call me, said, go back to the shed, get a couple of two by 12s long enough to go across the bed. I went and got those. We set them on the bed. He dropped the bucket, which lifted the front of the tractor. We put some stuff under the front of the tractor, drove it back hooked it up on the trailer, and we were off to the first job, <laughs> just like that. When we got there, he said, I'm gonna go talk to the customer for a moment. I want you to unload the tractor. I kid you not, unload the tractor. He was not gonna let that failure ruin me as a 15 and a half year old. He had such respect for human beings. So I got on, backed it off successfully. And over the next few years, in between football and track and weightlifting, I became very efficient with a tractor, a backhoe, bobcat, a wood splitter. <laughs> Even today, 
I love to get on a piece of equipment. When we moved up here to Huntsville, it was supposed to be a lot of snow. So I went and got a Kabuta with, with a front loader that now has got a big snow blower on. I just love to get out there on that tractor and drive it. It takes me back to that time. Terry Byers. I am so grateful for Terry. Now he was interesting because one day I, I stopped, he was sitting up on the tractor and I was down below and I said, Terry, I still remember this. I was talking to a friend over the weekend. He said something about overtime when you work over eight hours in a day or over 40 hours in a week. He goes, Hmm, I'll tell you what, why don't you work the first half of the day? That's the first eight hours to him. And I'll hire somebody to work the second half of the day. I'm going, mm. or you can have both halves. That was the end of the discussion. Now today that would be probably child labor violations. But to him, a work day was 16 hours. <laughs> My work day is still 12 to 15. I don't know anything different because if you love what you're doing, it's just not work. I am so grateful to Terry. I remember the day we went to do a, a brick and sand patio. I'll be done here in a moment if you're wondering. <laughs> he lines me all out. It's early in the morning. There's the lady with a cup of coffee drinking and watching. And Terry gets ready to leave. She goes, uh, wh wh where are you going? I'm 16 now, right? <laughs> um, but, oh, don't worry. I've given you my best man. She didn't know I was his only man. <laughs> well, the pressure's on. I've never done a brick and sand patio. But Terry taught me to never be afraid of anything. Anything. Well, from ninth grade football, to finally getting over fear, to then meeting Terry Byers. What a beautiful transition from spring football at the end of ninth grade to the summer between that and the 10th grade, starting to work for Barry, for Jared, for, for Terry Byers. Wow. Fearless. He taught me to be fearless. Now, you don't want to do crazy stuff, but we did some really incredible things. And he challenged me not to have any fear. Just do it. Did I make mistakes? Oh, yeah. One day I built a rock wall with the walls, rocks flat instead of stacked on top of each other. He just walked across the back of it. The whole thing collapsed. He said, stack them like this and went back to work. You learn, but you learn by doing. Who is the person in your life who is your Terry Byers? Beth, his wife, what a sweetheart. Oh, I just saw her in my mind. Smiling and smiling. I wish I had time to tell you all the stories because I made some really tragic errors in that process, other than just driving the truck in the back of the pickup truck. Lessons I will never forget. To this day, when I'm doing a job, I always say, is the trailer full? Is the trailer full because of an experience we had together? Or I went on a long trip and came back with a trailer that was not full. And he paid per truck, not for the amount on the truck. Is the trailer full? Who's your Terry Byers? Just write it in the, in the comments. Who taught you to really challenge your limits, to do things beyond what you thought you might be capable of doing, to learn to be fearless in what you're doing? Who was that? Could that have been a, a football coach? I could call, I could talk about Carl, our defensive coach when I was in high school, Carl Sheely, another great one. I've been thinking about them. They just keep coming to me over the weekend. So who's your grandma? Who's your educator? Who's the one who taught you to work? Someday I'll tell you more about Carl Sheely, a real builder of men. Who are these people in your life? Let us pause for a moment today and express gratitude for the people in our life who helped us get to where we are. 
One, it will awaken the very things they taught you. It'll help you uncover some of the frustration you may be in today so that all of you can show up. And today, let's shed that skin we've been dragging around, which has too long suffered the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity. Let's awaken that person they saw in us and let it show up today. And may we find greater levels of joy in doing so. Thanks, everyone. Have a blessed day.